what's the blackest of all black inks? It's this one. If you trust me, you can just quit watching the video now. Because it's this one. About a month ago, Platinum came out with this ink called Cho Kuro. Cho is kind of a kitschy way or slang way of saying very. And Kuro is just the word for black. So the name of this ink is Very Black. The initial thousand, which I think is now sold out just about everywhere, uh, came in this kind of monolith 2001 A Space Odyssey looking box. And then there's the inner black box. So they're really going with this black theme. But this fall, they'll be selling individual bottles of the ink. It comes with the ink, a converter, a bulb syringe, and some cleaning water. This is a pigment ink, and supposedly the particles are supposed to react with the minerals in the paper. In their marketing materials, they say it's purified water, but I think that's a translation problem. It's really distilled water you need to use. In Japan, you can get like a 500 milliliter bottle for a couple of dollars. And in the States, you can get like a gallon, which is about four liters for about a dollar. I have a water distiller and I use it in my humidifier in the winter. So don't let the idea of needing a specialty water to clean your pens with. It's not a problem at all. For my review today, I'll be comparing it to Platinum's own carbon ink, which has long been held as the blackest ink out there. Cho Kuro has proved to be very popular here in Japan. In Marazen sold out, I bought their last bottle. However, it's really interesting. I was the first woman that they sold the ink to. This is platinum carbon black being dripped into water. The Maduzen sales lady illustrated why you shouldn't use tap water with Cho Kuro because when she dripped it into water, it formed little teeny tiny flecks where it was binding with the minerals in the water. I couldn't replicate it at home. This is Cho Kuro being dripped in water. Other than looking a little bit stringy, I couldn't really show you why you shouldn't use regular water to clean your pens with that have Cho Kuro in it. But sometimes I go to extremes and I figured what kind of water has a lot of minerals in it. And the answer is mineral water. Remember, I couldn't get a reaction with regular water, but yeah, don't use mineral water to clean your pens. I did a real close-up with a shallow depth of field. You can see thin little lines that kind of trail after little flakes that have formed in the water with the ink. But the really striking thing is just how stretchy and weird this ink looks. This is like the Salvador Dali of ink drips. But the really scary stuff came after. It developed an ink slick on top. And then as you see here, it's just so weird. <laughs> These were all just suspended in water. And then when I picked up the glass vase to clean it out, I kind of shook it and the ink slick on top just broke apart. So yeah, remember to clean your pen with distilled water when using this ink. So let's now leave this hellscape. I'm going to use Platinum's WA, their modern Maquillet limited edition preppy, to use in both the carbon black and chokuro. One of the things you have to remember about pigment inks, it's mechanical action that cleans it out. So these converters are going to be just fine because platinum converters are made so that you can unscrew them and take them apart and then run like a little brush inside them to get that mechanical action you need to clean out the pigment. Both Carbon Black and Chokuro have a little plastic insert inside the bottle so that you have to turn it upside down and then slowly write it to fill the insert with ink before you fill your pen. In the Chokuro here on the right, the bubbles were kind of like how it is with gasoline, kind of like a rainbow colored bubbles. Let me see if I can get you a better view. Here you can see it first and then the Carbon Black. 
as I'll be swabbing and swatching, I don't want to stick anything like with water in it into my bottle of Chokuro. So I'm going to just use this dropper here and fill a little bit of um, ink into the small beaker. And then I'll be like if I'm using a paintbrush or whatever, I'm going to be dabbing it into that small little beaker instead of my bottle. I'll be sacrificing the converter on this Pilot Parallel. The Pilot Parallel is fine because you can take it apart and clean it. But the converter, so here I'm using a new one. Um, the converter, the Con 40 converter has these little beads and kind of a, a little hard stop uh, metal thing. So you can't put a brush inside of it. So I won't be able to get it completely clean. So this will be my Pilot Chokuro converter. The most thorough test I'll be doing is on Tamoa River. On the left hand side I'll have the Chokuro and the right hand side I'll have the carbon black. And as you can see when I test the Chokuro with the swab I dip it into the little beaker. As I use it the Chokuro does seem darker especially as the platinum carbon starts to dry. I use a glass pan and a paintbrush that's been cleaned with the distilled water. I also tested on Kunisawa cream paper, Midori MD paper, Rhodia dot grid pad, and something for the artists out there, this whole bean drawing book. It's 205 GSM and it's watercolor and multimedia paper. It's pretty thick. I tried to get artsy with my swab. I wrote out identical passages about obsidian on Tamoa River paper, carbon black on the left and chocolate on the right, and you can clearly see that the carbon black looks a little more ashy or gray. According to Platinum, the L star rating on the C Lab rating system for colors for carbon black is 34.4 and Chokuro is 18.3 with zero being like the blackest and 100 being white. So with these values alone, Chokuro is significantly blacker. As an afterthought, I compared Sharpie and Rollerball ink to the Chokuro, and it looks like it's pretty much well darker than either one of those. This is eyeballing it on Tamoa River paper. Here's the swabs on Tamoa River paper and Chokuro is on the left and you can see it's distinctly darker. I did all my measurements under a direct overhead 5600 Kelvin light. And I also didn't color correct any of this because every time I tried to do it, it tried to make both blacks the same. The glass pen sample on Tamoa River, Chokuro on the left and carbon black on the right. This is the Kunisawa cream paper. The Chokuro on the left looks significantly darker. This is the Rhodia dot grid with the platinum carbon on the right and you can see it looks significantly grayer. And this is the close up of the Midori MD paper with the Chokuro on the left. Especially in the swatch it looks a lot darker. And on the whole bean watercolor paper you've got the Chokuro on the left and it looks distinctly darker. So on all the papers, even to the naked eye, Chokuro looks distinctly darker and less ashy or gray than Carbon Black, which has always been the ultimate black. And now let's totally soak these two pieces of paper for the waterproof test. Both are totally waterproof, and I didn't see any lift off, but let's check. Using a wet paintbrush to provide that mechanical action I was talking about that ends up taking off pigment from Pigment Ink. You can't really see any lift off, but if I use a paper towel and mop it up a little bit, you can see there's just a real little bit of lift off on both the Carbon Black and the Chokuro. So how is the cleanup? Fountain Pen Memes had Chokuro in his pen for about a month and he offered to tell me his experience about it. He used the included bottle of cleaning water and the bulb syringe to draw up the water and expel the inky water. 
He used about this much water and he said it was a real hassle trying to limit the amount of water he uses. So he said he was going to go invest in a big old bottle of distilled water. His nib unit and converter came out squeaky clean and he loves the ink. He said a chemist friend of his told him that six times through the section would be critically diluted where it wouldn't matter anymore. The six cycles with the bulb syringe should take care of everything. I'll put his IG link in the show notes so you can check out his post. For science, I got some of the ink on my fingers on purpose to see how hard it would be to get off my fingers. I used running water and dish soap, and I got most of the ink off. After filming everything, I had forgotten I'd left the ink in this little beaker and it dried up. So I just poured in some distilled water and let it sit for about five minutes and used a paper towel to help clean it out and it came out like brand new but dropped it and broke it before i got this chokuro the only black ink i owned was this one here and i got it mainly because it's a pretty bottle i'm completely a color kind of ink person but i love this ink the best way to describe it is lush and don't worry it's not going to become a black ink version of bay state blue it's relatively easy to clean up. The main thing is just remember which pen you have this ink in. So when you go to clean it out, you can use the distilled water. I just put a piece of tape on it and then write down Chokuro. And I'll close out this video by showing you some more horror pictures with my experiment with the mineral water.